tabular integration is an integration by parts shortcut. I cannot swear that these are the only situations where you would use it. But the three major situations are when you have a polynomial times a sign or a polynomial times a cosine or a polynomial times an exponential function. All three of these cases can always be solved using integration by parts. However, if these polynomials are of high degree, Doing so becomes intensely tedious. You have to use integration by parts over and over again. Just as an example of the kind of issue you run into, suppose we've got x to the fifth minus x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x minus one times the sine of x dx. You make the observation that this will become simpler when you differentiate, while the sine, when you integrate it, just gives you a negative cosine. That's at least not any worse. So you decide that you're going to use integration by parts, letting u be your polynomial and dv be your trig function. You compute to du without difficulty. And you compute to v also without difficulty. And integration by part says you should take u of v. So the negative cosine of x times this polynomial minus the integral of v du. Negative, let me write this polynomial. So then you have to take this integral. And this integral is easier than the one you started with in the sense that this polynomial is of a lower degree than this polynomial. So you've improved the situation, but not to such an extent that you can integrate to this. However, you could use integration by parts again, and that would give you the, an integral with a third degree polynomial 
and a sine. Integrate by parts again. You'll get a second degree polynomial and a cosine. Integrate by parts again. You'll get a first degree polynomial and a sine. Integrate by parts again. You'll get a constant and a cosine. And you'll be able to compute that integral. It should be pretty clear that that is a lot of work that we would rather not to do. So we've got this shortcut. And I'm going to illustrate the way this shortcut works via example. We're going to create a table via this example specifically. We'll create a table starting with the polynomial, which we'll put under D for derivative. And the sign which we'll put under I for integration. And between these columns, we'll put a plus sign. And now we're going to differentiate these terms until nothing is left but zero. And every time we differentiate, we take whatever we have over here and we integrate. And we're going to alternate between plus and minus signs. And I think if you do not mind, I will complete this table off screen. And now these terms over here are going to be multiplied by these terms over here, but we go down a row, as you see. And for each of these terms, we're going to look at the sign above this connecting line. Let me again pause the video. Now, as I say, we're going to multiply these terms and we are going to add and subtract those products. When are we going to add and when are we going to subtract? These signs give us the key. So this product has a positive sign in front of it. I didn't bother to write it. I could if I wanted to, but we usually don't. When we multiply these, 
we also retract that product because of that negative sign. When we multiply these, we'll add that product because of the positive sign. And so on. We'll subtract this product, add this product, subtract this product. And there is your derivative. And heaven forbid we try to distribute all of this out and simplify it. I will leave it as is, even if as is is pretty ugly.